Today I'm going to be demonstrating palpation techniques for the shoulder region. The first thing that you want to do when palpating the posterior structures in sitting is make sure that the patient is comfortable, appropriately draped, and has her feet supported, which we do with the leg rest. The first thing that you want to do is simply place your hands on the shoulders to see how the patient responds to your touch, to get a sense of the tenseness of the most superior muscles, and also to quiet yourself as a therapist to start to focus on your hands and what you're feeling. When in this position, if you'd like, you can actually palpate the first rib. Can you have you look straight ahead for me, please? By coming in to the base of the neck and applying a pressure inferiorly and medially at approximately a 45 degree angle, in front of the upper trapezius, you can find the first rib. And here you would be looking at symmetry, height symmetry, superior and inferiorly. We'll also be going through first rib uh, while the patient is in supine. So back in this position, what you're going to do is your thumbs are going to naturally fall along the medial border of the scapula. In this patient, the scapular borders are, are well defined. However, if you have difficulty finding the scapular border, go ahead and ask the patient to put their hand behind their shoulder, their back and that will allow you to uh, find the border. Go ahead and light your hands on again. You can choose to either look at eye level um, bilaterally and looking for positioning of the scapula and looking for asymmetry. So in this subject, the right scapula is abducted and upwardly rotated compared to the left. If you would prefer, you can go to one side, um, find the border with your thumb, but then come in perpendicular to the border and press laterally along the border. Once you get along the medial border, you're going to get to the inferior angle of the scapula. And here what you can do is look for symmetry of movement of the scapula with arm elevation. Let's go ahead and lift both arms up overhead. Flexion's fine. Right flexion's fine too. So here I can look for symmetry. Come on back down. And again, this patient does not have symmetry of the scapula. Go ahead and do that again for me. Where we're getting increased elevation and upward rotation of the right scapula compared to the left. And once you've found the inferior angle of the scapula, you can travel laterally. Again, you're palpating through several muscles to find the lateral border and you're going to come up until you get to the angle of the scapula, or excuse me, the acromial angle, which is simply the posterior aspect of the acromion. Now if we come back down along the lateral border and then again back up the medial border, we can travel all the way up to the superior angle. This may be hard to palpate given uh, tightness of the levator scapulae in particular. Um, and this does tend to be a spot where people have a lot of tightness. The other bony landmark of the scapula that you'll want to palpate is the spine of the scapula. So here you can just place your hands over the superior aspect of the scapula and the spine of the scapula will jump right out. So again, we can follow the spine of the scapula all the way out until you get to the acromial angle. Now, the spine of the scapula is going to divide the suprascapular fossa and the infrascapular fossa. Uh, sitting is not the best position to palpate soft tissue, so we will go back and palpate these muscle bellies um, with the patient in prone. So, we've palpated the acromial angle from the posterior aspect, and I've moved now laterally. And now what you want to do is palpate anteriorly until you've gotten to the anterior aspect of the acromion. And what you want to appreciate is the width of the acromion of the patient. From this landmark, you can come over to the lateral border of the acromion and step down. Now the acromion is above my thumb and the humeral head is below. This is the subacromial space. So this is where you will find the subacromial bursa. Again, if a patient is asymptomatic, you won't feel anything remarkable there. So we're palpating for reproduction of symptoms and potentially increased fluid when we press if they do have a bursitis in that region. Now, also laterally, uh, we're going to palpate the deltoid tubercle. So you're going to come down, use the pad of two to three fingers, and uh, go in a circular fashion until you found the deltoid tubercle. 
that's going to be a common landmark for referral of glenohumeral pain, so it'll be important to palpate the tubercle. In this patient, the deltoid is well defined, so it's easy to find that attachment. If you have a patient in which that is difficult to find, go ahead and resist abduction. So what I'd like you to do is try to bring your elbow up to help increase the definition of the deltoid. Go ahead and relax. Now the brachial artery is also important to palpate. It's one that we typically palpate in children um, during CPR, but we'll also need to be able to palpate the brachial artery in um, older adults. If you count 20 something years older. Sorry. <laughs> My finger nerve. So what you want to do is get on the medial aspect of the belly of the biceps and then press along the uh, humerus. Now the, the median nerve and the ulnar nerve also travel on either side of the brachial artery, so you do need to be cautious with your structures, but I can feel a strong pulse right there. Okay. Okay, so we've palpated the lateral structures of the shoulder and we're going to move on to the anterior structures. We're going to start with the anterior structures of the humerus and so to palpate those I'm going to cradle the patient's arm in my arm and I want her to be completely relaxed and to allow me to move her shoulder. I'm then going to palpate with the pads of my three fingers just along the anterior aspect of the humerus. I know I'm on the humerus and not on the a clavicle or scapula in any way because I can feel the movement underneath my fingers. Now as I passively take her into lateral rotation, I'm going to feel a bump under my fingers that's going to be the medial tubercle of the humerus, which is an attachment site of some of the medial rotators. As I come this way, I'm going to feel the intertubercular groove or bicipital groove or the long head of the biceps. And as I medially rotate, I get another bump, and that's going to be the greater tubercle of the humerus, which is also pretty critical, um, a muscle attachment site. So again, you're going to rotate through. I'm not moving my fingers at all, but simply letting those structures come in underneath my fingers. Now, we can also palpate the attachment of the supraspinatus anteriorly, which attaches to the, the greater tubercle. And what we want to do here is fully extend come off the anterior aspect of the acromion and palpate right there for reproduction of symptoms. Given the, uh, the attachment of the supraspinatus, we can only palpate that if we have the arm extended. And again, it's more reproduction of symptoms than being able to palpate a specific structure. Now also in this position, we can palpate the coracoid process. So I'm going to come in and gently apply pressure with two to three fingers and feeling for um, a bump. So the coracoid process is really going to be like a finger um, sticking anteriorly. Once I've found that, I can go along the borders of the coracoid process to feel the muscle attachments of the coracobrachialis, the short head of the biceps, and the pec minor. I also can palpate the ligaments. So if I go between the coracoid process and the clavicle, I'm palpating the coracoclavicular ligament. And then at approximately a 40 degree angle laterally, I can palpate the ligament, the coracoacromial ligament. Now, to palpate the ligaments, I'm moving cross fiber so that I can feel those bands. Now to continue on um, from the acromion, I come back and find the width of the acromion. And now I'm going to palpate medially until I hit a step. And so now my fingers are hitting the ridge, and that's where the clavicle is attaching to the acromion at the acromioclavicular joint. Once I've found that, I'm going to palpate over that so that I can feel the integrity of that joint. I might ask the patient to elevate your shoulder, show your shoulder. Good. Back down and protract your shoulder and retract your shoulder. We had a little bit of crepitus for it, anti. To feel movement at that joint. Now you're going to palpate along the length of the clavicle. It's very common for people to have clavicular fractures, so don't be surprised if you feel a bump in the clavicle that's asymptomatic. I'm coming along until I feel a step down. That's going to be the sternoclavicular joint, and now my finger is resting in the suprasternal notch. One other structure that you can palpate on the anterior aspect of the shoulder is the anterior border of the glenoid fossa. So again, start by finding the coracoid. 
what you do with your quarter coin. And then you're going to come over and with your other hand find the humeral head. The, the glenoid, the anterior rim of the glenoid flaccid is going to be in between those two structures and you have to palpate relatively deeply. So I'm actually going to change the angle of my hand so that it is no longer parallel to the skin but is further out. And it's going to be right there. Now I will know that I am on the glenoid fossa and not on the humerus because when I rotate the arm, that structure does not 